thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you give us to uh, still be alive and uh, be better and to perform better in all the aspects that you have given us. Uh, thank you for the providence that you have uh, given us also to be alive and to have a roof in our heads, to have clothing, to have food, to have everything that we need in order to uh, be being corrected by you, by your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity to also share with Steve and Wolf uh, so we can just be growing together uh, as you expect us to, to do. Uh, let us find your divine purpose so because you created us with a divine purpose. So let us find out what which is it uh, so we can just be better as you expect us. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, opportunity to share this this following sessions and let us, Lord, if it's your will, that we finish these 66 weeks uh, studying your word and be better by the end of it. Thank you, Lord, in the name of our Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. And amen, amen. amen. Okay, my friends. So we are starting today with this uh, 66 sessions of the Bible. So it's, it's going to be very interesting, a very interesting journey because we are going to share a lot of things, not, uh, oh, let me just put up the slides. Uh, and there we go. Uno momento, por favor. I just forgot to set up the slides. <laughs> there we go. And there we go. And share my screen. Full screen. There we go. Okay, there we go. So this journey begins today, and we are about to study the Bible in 66 sessions. So that will be 66 weeks, a whole year and about half of it. So it's going to be a year and a half studying the Bible. So welcome to this, uh, this part. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting journey because as we are uh, sharing is going, going to be to be very intimate. Uh, we are going to get to know each other better, but not not just to build up the relationship with, within us, but also to build up a better relationship with our Creator. So let's see the goals of this uh, following 66 studies, 66 weeks, is first to study an overview of each book of the Bible per week. So one book per week. Also, the goal would be to read the entire Bible in the 66 weeks, uh, but in a very ordered way. Okay, so we will, well, there are some different options. I will uh, just propose a couple of them, uh, but the goal is to read the entire Bible. I, I'm pretty sure that you might read even faster but the, the goal is to at least read it once throughout the 66 weeks, okay? And the main goal is to build a better relationship with our creator, okay, and his work. So to get to understand, mostly because uh, to understand the Hebraic perspective of the Bible, let me just close up these windows here. And uh, there we go. And yeah. So we are going to read and study the Bible, okay? And not studying to become just very good students, but to be doers of the word, okay? That's also the goal. So let me share you a Bible study technique that might be helpful to, uh, to reach or to seek for our Lord's voice and to see what he's expecting from each of us. So this technique will help us to better understand not just the Bible by itself, but what the Bible is actually telling to us in a very uh, personal way. So first of all, we have to schedule every day uh, the reading time. So it's very good to set up a time, let's say from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. every day, I'm going to read the Bible. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you might already have this. And of course, it might be changing because of different things. If you are sick, if the girls are just waking up in a different hour or anything, just schedule, a, schedule or plan a, a specific time to read your Bible, okay? 
find a Bible that you can read, but also that you are willing to underline. This technique, uh, it's by underlining or highlighting different verses or even words of the Bible. So they start speaking up to you. Okay. And there are, this is, this is a, a suggested, suggested technique by highlighting with five different highlighters or markers. So to, to use five different colors in order to make a better study of the Bible. So first color would be to highlight in yellow what you believe is important for you. That you think, think that these or that verse are is important. So just highlight it in yellow, in yellow color. I suggest to use the orange color. And actually, in, back in US, so on, I think also in Canada, and maybe you might find them in, in Amazon, there are these very good highlighters that are gel-based, so they don't just uh, go throughout the, the page of the Bible. So they just stay on one side of the, <clears throat> of the page, okay? Uh, I don't remember the brand. There's a very good brand for highlighting the Bible. So in orange... I suggest to uh, on, highlight whatever you believe it's it's an investigation of this word or this verse or this passage is required. When you believe there's an, an investigation to do, so it's a, like a pending list, okay? So you just find the colors and you have your orange color and you uh, just investigate on, on, on that topic. I recommend to highlight in green in the green color, uh, whatever you believe is the, the core message of a book of the Bible. Let's see uh, the core message about uh, Genesis. So if you believe there's a core message in the whole Bible and you just highlight it in green, so you under, get a better understanding of the, of the whole book, okay? So this would be sometimes different, but sometimes we might highlight the same the same uh, passage, okay? The same verses. In blue, is it's a good idea to highlight whatever we find that are promises to Israel to who to God's people, okay? To highlight them in blue, so they are just popping out every time you reread your Bible. So they are already these colors, and you just focus on those better. And finally, well, you can use a different color, but pink is suggested because <laughs> pink is sometimes associated with love. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever you find these verses that actually, there are some verses that just break your heart because of the amount of love that you find on those words by God. So you can highlight those in pink. So these are the manifestation of love of God to us, okay? So it's just a recommendation. Of course, you can use your own technique. You can use whatever technique you find. So, but this is just a suggestion, okay? So by the end of reading the Bible, you have all these different colors, but you can just make a different study or different read uh, on the Bible. Sometimes people don't don't like to highlight in, in a, at least in some uh, countries in Latin America, the, I, I didn't, didn't understand this until I started uh, sharing this with people from other countries. Uh, there's no access to highlighters. They don't have mm -hmm. highlighters or they only have water-based highlighters. So they go through the page. So they don't have this gel-based and there's no Amazon and no, <laughs> no other mm -hmm. uh, supplier in some countries. So they just, just use pens, uh, you know, ink pens. So they underline, or I suggest to underline with three different colors of pens that would be black, red, and blue. And actually I find this technique even better. I have used the color technique and it's very helpful, but nowadays I just highlight in three different colors, just blue, red, and, and black. In black, I suggest to underline the things that you find important for your life. In red, things that are very, very important that are life, <laughs> that your life depends on those verses, just highlight them in red. And in blue, uh, things that require more investigation or more study, like to find out 
the Hebrew on uh, on those words or the understand what it's the meaning and understanding from the Hebraic perspective. Those kind of words or those kind of verses, you highlight them or just underline them in the blue color, okay? Because in co some countries, they only have access to these three colors of pens too. In some mm -hmm. other countries, in Mexico, we have pens of, I don't know, the rainbow colors on, uh, on pens. There are some countries that they don't. Uh, but I'm pretty sure yeah, that you might have access to, to this in each of these techniques, okay? The thing is that sometimes we are just used to read the Bible, but not to highlight the Bible. So verses will, or the study of the Bible will, will become uh, better if we start highlighting or underlining our Bibles, okay? There are some people that actually, they don't like to underline their Bibles. So that's why I suggest to buy a Bible that you are... Uh, comfortable with uh, highlighting or, or underlining, okay? I don't know, have you used any other technique that you want to share? No? Um, just, I, I write in my Bible, so. Yeah. Oh, there are some very good Bibles that actually on the side of them, you can just uh, make some notes. They have some space or some room here to make your own notes. But there are, there are Bibles that they're just the printing is all over, so you, you don't have any, just a very small amount of space there to uh, make some notes. But there are Bibles that you can actually make some uh, uh, marks or annotation on the side. Okay, yeah, you can also write directly on the Bible. Yeah. Okay, what about you, Wolf? Have you used any study technique for the Bible? I, I was one of those people that never wanted to write in my Bible, and I actually just started in this last week and what i wanted to do was go wow. out <laughs> all my notes from uh, from our original class and uh, i wanted to highlight everything where there were mistranslations and okay. and i wanted to also highlight all those areas that were used as arguments but they were con arguments out of context so that they would jump out at me when somebody was kind of using those so i wanted to put that in my Bible. And then once I made a decision to do that, and I started reading again at the beginning, I, I, I actually did a little bit of highlighting here. So <laughs> great, great. Good yeah, it's a very, it's a, it's a very important thing because sometimes, well, at least when you don't highlight uh, the verses or you don't underline, if you want to find something, it's actually a lot easier if it's already highlighted. Because you start, you have to ha have everything in your mind. And actually, if you open up your Bible and it's already colored, you are e e it's a lot easier to find some verses on some patches. Just a moment, because the the light here is very low. So let me just change the light here for a moment. Yeah, I'm gonna. I, I can tell you, Wolf. I, uh, I I like the idea that we is given with the colors, but but I I use basically yellow. I have my yellow and uh, it, it highlights pretty much everything. There's been times I didn't have yellow. And if you look through mine, I have green sometimes and I have orange and that. So uh, um, Louisa's, Louisa's done this whole process uh, with the different colors and, um, and to, to have a kind of a, uh, I don't know, what's it a, like a guide or a, a, a ledger of, of what each one means. Uh, a code, a code. Yes, uh, certainly, certainly. We'll uh, like Moe was just saying there at the end. When you open up your Bible, it attacks. I like I like your idea too. That's a really good idea of, of having some of the uh, uh, supports and uh, and yes, since we've been investigating investigating so much the mistranslations, <laughs> that is a that is a neat thing too. So uh, I don't know. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come up with an. E an F and a G color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my friend. So this is just a suggestion. So you get to study better. We get to study better our Bibles. And actually, I'm just looking for an English English version of the Bible. So I start reading the Bible for the first time in English. So uh, this would be a good journey, but yeah, I'm just trying to find a, a very good Bible and an easy to get Bible because I, I, as you know, here in Mexico, they don't print English Bibles. So I'm just looking forward to have one. Okay, so if you have some recommendations, I, I'm e uh, willing to have the ESV, with which I like the translation, but I don't know if you have any other suggestions. I don't know if getting the key King James version would be a good idea. I don't know, I'm still deciding. 
No, the ESV, I think for you, Moe, to get the ESV or even, you know, taking a leap, but again, it's not going to give you a lot is the new living translation is, is a good read too, but it misses and adds certain things. I like Wolf's uh, version, uh, the amplified version, the, the amplified version. There's some good things that he shared from the amplified version. I've got it in the back of my mind when, when this ESV becomes tattered and torn and, and again, I think of a new uh, version to read because I think it's important to read different versions too yeah. as you go through your faith, right? So, yeah, it's very important to have different versions so you can just compare them. And well, at least with the the cell phones and the eSword and all the tools, you have access to like you can have access to uh, thousands thousands of different versions. But have it the printed book by itself is it's it's a different feeling and a different kind of study. Okay. Yeah. So let me share with you also a recommended reading speed. Of course, I know yet that you might already read a lot faster, but sometimes we have to pace down our reading so we get a better understanding on the reading that we are doing, okay? Most of the times, the misunderstandings of, of the Bible is just because we lack of basic reading and comprehension, comprehension skills. Most of the times it's just basic reading and comprehension, uh, comprehensions, misunderstandings. Sometimes because people read very fast. So I recommend to slow down if you are a fast reader. Uh, and if you are a slow reader, then I suggest to speed up a little bit. Okay, so there's there's a recommended reading speed. So we find we find a year and a year and a half reading uh, for the whole Bible is a it's an okay uh, an okay pace. Okay, to read the Bible. So let's let's share this. So the King James version has one thousand one hundred and eighty nine chapters in total. Some chapters are very small, very a few amount of words in, in these chapters. Some chapters are very wide. So, but this is the amount of chapters. If we break down the all these chapters in 66 weeks, we get a reading to for about three chapters per day, reading every single day. On this page, we read the whole Bible in one year. Okay. So it's such suggested reading speed. So we get to meditate in what we are reading. Uh, of course, there are some days that you might read four or five verses, uh, chapters, sorry, and that's fine. Maybe some, time, some days you will just be able to read one chapter only because you're uh, going through something. Or maybe some days you are not reading at all. And that's okay because our life will be just changing throughout this year. So sometimes you will be reading more, sometimes you are reading less, but the, the suggested speed is three chapters per day, something like that, okay? So we'll, we'll complete the entire Bible in one year. So the secret is to make the habit or to create the habit to read daily, every single day. Uh, and actually is that's uh, supported by the, the Torah in the Deuteronomy or the Varim 17, 19, that is uh, uh, mitzvot, so an instruction for the kings that they should read every day and meditate in what uh, you are reading on the Bible. Of course, this applies to the Torah, but as we are reading the whole Bible, it's suggested to read every day, at least a verse, at least a word even uh, of the Bible. If it's a chapter or three chapters, that's okay. Okay. Uh, it's important to pray before we read to pray before our Lord, to our Creator, so He reveals to us what He's expecting from each of us. So it's very important to pray. And that's when the highlighting or underlining technique becomes very helpful. So we extract the, the principles that He's just showing us so we can apply them in our life. Okay? Uh, we are expected not to be just good readers or good listeners of the Bible, but good doers of what we are finding in the Bible. Okay, so these techniques are in order to do what the Bible say, not just to give information or data in our minds, because that that's what happened with some people. There's people that know a lot of Bible. 
know and have memorized a lot of verses, but their life, their life is just messed up. <laughs> they don't apply all these uh, principles into their life. They know them, but they don't do it. So we are expected to be doers of the word, not listeners or not passive listeners of the word. Okay, so there are different options of reading, of reading speed. Uh, let me share you with uh, share with you why I, su I suggest even more. So it's to read three chapters per day in order of the books from Genesis all the way to Revelation. But also every day to read one, one psalm and read it aloud. Actually to speak directly one of the psalms per day. That will build up our vertical relationship with our Lord. So reading aloud the, the psalms is a very good uh, suggested technique also because we are just speaking the word and this changes in our brain something. I don't know. I'm not able to pinpoint exactly what is changing in our brains, but to speak aloud the, the verses of the Psalms, it's it's different. So I suggest to, so you read it aloud, okay? Uh, every Psalm. So there are 150 Psalms. So we start day one, Psalm number one. Day two, Psalm number two. And we go all the way through the Psalms, one Psalm per, per day. And when we end up with the Psalms, so those, those would be 150 days. By the end of the 150 days, we start all over from Psalm one again. Okay, throughout all the 66 weeks. And also I suggest to, this is not to read aloud, but to read and really meditate in one proverb per, per day one chapter of Proverbs per day. And we use the number of the days of the month to read these Proverbs per day. So let's say today is uh, 20th of August. We should read today the Proverb number 20 and tomorrow Proverb 21. This will build up our horizontal relationship with others. Proverbs are meant to... Uh, to be the practical application of the Torah and the principles and the instructions uh, written there. So the Proverbs will build up this horizontal relationship. So those, those Proverbs are supposed to be meditated also, but also applying them in our lives. So by the end of the month, there are 31 Proverbs. By the end of the month, the next month, we'll start all over from uh, Proverb number one. Day number one, Proverb number one, okay? Of course, there are months that are 31 days in a month, but there are months that are there are 30 days in a month. On the 30 uh, days day, per, days per month, we read the last day. We read Proverbs 30 and Proverbs 31. Okay, and on day number one of the month, we start reading again Proverbs number one and just all over and continuously every month we go through all the Proverbs every single month. Okay. Any questions or comments so far? Just a comment, and, uh, and again, I'm sure it's okay, Molly. Um, I'm a, I, I'm not a good reader at all, um, so um, I I read my Bible at least I try to every day, and um, and I use I use now an audio app, and I follow along with a, dramas, a dramatization uh, with different voices and that and. Mm -hmm. uh, it has helped me a lot with reading the Bible quite a bit, and and actually, and actually, I'm an audio learner, so I'm a visual and audio learner. So um, um, it's helped me a lot. But I, I'm sure, obviously, I'm sure that's okay still to do it that way, right? Yes, of course. I, and actually, remember back in the days, a um, lot of people didn't know even how to read; they didn't have the reading skills, so they actually just listened to the word, and that's okay. Okay. Yeah. What I should just recommend you is that if you find a verse that you are listening to it and you find it like very interesting, go now to your Bible and highlight those verses. Oh no, I read I read along with my Bible. Oh, you read it along. Oh yeah, well, that's even better. <laughs> oh no, no, I, I I read along with my Bible. I'm able to highlight or stop or or things like. Oh no, no, I read along with the Bible, right? I just don't listen to it. I read along with it. Oh, great, great. Oh, that's even that's even better. Okay, okay. to start listening uh, to the Bible and just reading it, it it's way better. Uh, the thing is that some people that are always on the road, 
uh, they just listen to the Bible because <laughs> they don't have the time. So just listen to the Bible. Uh, but I, in th those cases, I would just recommend to uh, go th then afterwards of the Bible to the Bible to the listen uh, verses. So you highlight them. OK, but in your case, you're listening and reading along. So that's even better. Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for the comment. OK, so everyone ready? Are you ready? So we begin our journey <laughs> of reading the whole Bible I, in 66 sessions, 66 it, weeks. It's, it's Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a long journey. It's not It's not going to be a, a hundred meter speed race. It's going to be like a marathon of uh, 66 weeks. So it's going to get some time and we are not just going to discuss the Bible, but also uh, the Lord has, uh, uh, he has put in my heart to share also uh, different, different uh, things that can help us to uh, a better understanding on the Bible. Okay. We'll get to those later. So let's start with the book of Bereshit. Also, if you have the time, I would strongly recommend to throughout these 66 weeks, make a time to, um, to do some kind of Hebrew reading course, basic reading course of the Hebrew characters. Okay. Not a deep Hebrew. Uh, we are not going to speak in Hebrew. It's just to get the reading of the letters of the Bible in Hebrew those will become very handy at, at some point. Um, the thing is that I only have Hebrew basic uh, reading, but in Spanish, because as you know, I share with this with also Spanish speaking uh, students. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you will be able to find some English, English versions of these uh, basic courses just to read the characters of the Hebrew Bible. Okay, just uh, a comment here is that don't go to, modern Hebrew courses. If you are able to find to some biblical Hebrew courses to read just the characters in the Bible, though that course it's gonna be very handy. Okay. There are some difference between the modern Hebrew and the biblical Hebrew. It's not exactly the same. Okay. So we are finding or looking for a basic Hebrew reading skills. I think Jeff Benner in his website, he has a, a course there. I haven't go through it, but I know that he has a course to read the Hebrew, the basic Hebrew Bible uh, uh, language, okay? So in order to to achieve some of that, so here will we, we will find the written characters of the Hebrew. <clears throat> so here in the, in the, in the text in Hebrew says, Bereshit, Bereshit. Okay, so we get familiar with the characters in Hebrew. So Bereshit has been translated into Genesis, into Genesis. So if we find the Torah to be the spine, the backbone of the entire Bible, then Bereshit would be the foundations of the other 65 books. So Bereshit is very important for us because it sets up all the foundations for the rest of the of the bible so having a very good study of, of bereshit is very important okay so let's make an outline of the book of bereshit a main outline would be to uh, split genesis or bereshit in two different sections part number one would be the first 11 chapters and the first 11 chapters would be the origins of everything. The first 11 <laughs> chapters are the origins of everything. And after that, part number two would be the chapters 12 to 50. And in those chapters, we will find the origin of the redeeming family. The family from which the Messiah will be born years later, of course, but he here we will find uh, the basics of this family. Okay, so those will set up uh, and, and will be understood better uh, throughout the whole Bible. Okay, so these two sections of the Bereshit, so the first eleven chapters and the chapters twelve to fifty. Let's go to part number one. 
the origin of all things. That's why actually the word Bereshit in Hebrew has been has been translated first to the Greek language as Genesis. And the word Genesis in Greek means origins. Okay, the origins of everything, of all things. So in, in part number one, we will find the origin of the universe. We can find also the origin of nature. We'll find the origin of the seas, the sky, the, the dry land. We find the origins of the animals, the birds, the fishes, so everything. And also the origin of the human being. So as you can see, we are looking for, uh, we're actually finding here uh, the origin of everything in the first 11 chapters of our Bibles. Uh, we also find the origin of marriage. Nowadays, very attacked by some groups of people. Uh, they want to uh, dissolve the marriages and that is no longer an institution in some societies. But we find the origin of marriage here in the Bible. <clears throat> one man with one woman. That's the marriage, okay? According to the Bible and the creator. <clears throat> we also find the origin of family, of the concept of family. Uh, the marriage is just the beginning of the family and without marriage, you cannot have a family. Uh, so we have we also find here the origins of, of the family. Family has been redefined by society nowadays. So they find that you can be family, you and your dog. <laughs> that's it. And well, not according to the Bible. According to the Bible, <laughs> that's not a family. Okay. A family, it's a father, a mother, that they are married and they have their kids. That's a family. That's the basic understanding of a family. We cannot redefine according to uh, our modern society. We cannot redefine what it's already established in the Bible. Here in Bereshit, in part number one, we also find the origin of evil. So misunderstood what evil really means and the purpose of evil in our lives. There's a purpose for evil in our lives. So we find the, here the origin of evil. So what is the importance of knowing all these origins of things? Uh, because it gives us identity. If we know our identity and we understand that we are created things and we are not creators, uh, everything starts uh, falling into place. So Bereshit, in the first 11 chapters of the Bible, the importance of them is that we find the biggest answers to the biggest questions that the human being has uh, has had from from a lot of time, uh, because the ba these are basic questions that at least we have to make once in a while, and we should just continuously uh, question ourselves: Who am I? To define who am I is better if we look into the Bible. And the Bible will tell us who we are. Where do we come from? Where do I come from? This is a basic question that some people don't like to uh, ask because they don't find questions. And they are looking for the answers in the wrong places. In the TV, now Netflix or, or uh, social media, they try to find the answers to these questions that they have in their inner selves but they are also afraid to ask because they know that their the answer is not going to fulfill their uh, uh, their tendencies. So we find the answers here in Bereshit. Who am I? Where do I come from? And where do I go when I die? These are the kind of questions that we don't like uh, to question ourselves. But when we find the answers in the Bible, that gives us actually peace in our hearts, knowing who we are, where do we come from, and where are we going to? So these are very important questions that we should do to ourselves from time to time. So the main foundation of all Bereshit and the whole Bible would be the very first verse of the Bible. If we grasp 
a good understanding of this verse, where it's this verse is so deep, we are not going to uh, go into the details now. We're just going to read it as it is. It would be Bereshit 1, verse 1. Genesis 1, verse 1. This is the main foundation of the whole Bible. If we have a very good understanding, and this is a verse that you can just study the rest of your life, this is so important because it sets up the foundation for the whole Bible. And here we see it in Hebrew. Do you know it in Hebrew? Do you have some basic Hebrew reading skills? No? None? Okay, so that's why <laughs> we should be familiar with the, the Hebrew because in Hebrew, the, the, the deepened understanding of this verse comes from the Hebrew language. In English, we won't find, because in, in English, how does it say in your Bible, in the in, in your English version, how does it say Genesis 1, chapter, uh, verse 1? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When we read it in Hebrew, it's way deeper, this verse. A lot deeper, this verse. Of course, it doesn't uh, get rid of the basic translation that is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, uh, but goes way deeper. We have we find our Messiah almost in every letter of this uh, of this verse in the Hebrew. So that's why it's so important to start reading, at least have some basic reading skills of the Hebrew language of the Bible. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wolf, do you have your hand raised? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, I can't read it and I can't uh, digest that, but I saw a very good video once where they broke down the basically just the first script there and it basically like you said it prophesies the messiah does everything it i, I will post it to our comment site it was by rock island books and it's called uh, is the end of days prophesied in the first word of the bible by rock mm -hmm. island it's a very good video he does the little whiteboard presentation and breaks down each letter and just i mean it's like playing chess on three levels it every letter has its own meaning that combines together with the the second letter and then the second letter and the third letter combine to mean something else and it's uh, just it's an amazing presentation i don't know if you've seen it or not no, no I actually please, if you if you share. yeah please share it in the in the in the group that we have in telegram yeah because that's why that's uh, I, i'm just exhorting you i don't know if exhortation it's yeah it's an english word too uh I'm just pushing you to get some encourage you, yeah, to have some <laughs> basic Hebrew reading skills. But also, even with basic um, reading, you can just yeah, your mind will just blow up when you find this the, the importance of but, the, the Hebrew. But also, as amazing as this is in his presentation, again, we can't buy into everybody's doctrine. His actually. Uh, analysis is real good but then also later on <clears throat> his doctrine he believes in like a um a pre-trib a pre-trib pre rapture so you know people go off the rails uh, left and right but at least this what he presents is very very good thank you yes good yeah yeah it's very important for for us to uh, and actually to acquire the responsibility to start reading and studying and acquiring the responsibility of have something this sacred for the world, to have the word of our Lord, it's very sacred. So we need to acquire this responsibility before him, specifically to what you just mentioned, uh, Wolf, to not, um, not follow any other human being and their interpretation and their doctrine, but to follow directly and to see it by ourselves. Okay, we need that responsibility. So that's why I'm encouraging you to uh, get these reading, basic reading skills of the Hebrew. Okay, so here in Hebrew says from uh, right to left, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim beet haaretz. Just with these basic reading skills, we can tell that 
is not specifically in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, it might change to something like in the reshit. In the reshit, Elohim organized the heavens and the earth. Just a basic direct translation. Not going so deep today. Maybe sometimes our Lord uh, gives us uh, uh, life and time to study deeper these, these verses, this first verse of the Bible. But it's a very good thing to understand that we are creation and he is the creator. We are disorganized. He organizes us. Okay. So just with that basic thing, we can see that uh, the Big Bang Theory uh, falls into place with this. He is the one organizing things. Even if the Big Bang Theory is right, even the Big Bang uh, was allowed and organized by him. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, I will share also in the group, I will share this uh, small conference of a doctor, Dr. Gerard Schreller, I think that's the last name. Uh, he's a very well-studied uh, scientist. He's a Jew. He also uh, uh, teaches the Torah. Uh, the thing is that for our minds, eternity is a very complex uh, term to under really understand eternity. What is eternity? What is God? Which is also a very valid question for us. What is God? Who is God? So the thing is, in order to answer those questions, we need to have our minds just empty so he can start filling up and organizing the thoughts uh, himself. Why? Because our minds, our brains, are just bound to time, to matter, to what we can actually see. That's what the brain uh, knows as valid. But the thing is, it's, uh, a lot of things on the Bible uh, are out of time, out of matter, out of, of space. So by to the brain to think in no time, no space, and no matter, uh, it's very difficult. So to understand eternity on a very finite uh, life, uh, it's very, very, very hard for our brains. Even the concept of him creating or organizing things before things existed, our mind cannot deal with that. <laughs> we just can't just kind of grasp the concept, but really understanding the concept is because we are bounded to time, space, and matter. So the concept of nothing, of nothing, can you think in nothing? That's very hard. Our brain is always, think, is always thinking in something, but thinking if, of nothing and nothing that contains everything, that's a, a very, very uh, interesting concept for our brains. We, but we should challenge our brains to think of everything coming out of nothing, but the nothing that contains everything and he being the creator of everything. So from nothing so he was nothing but or he was everything or <laughs> yeah you, you can see the the stumble in our brains <laughs> that's why scientists try to find um uh, an answer to these questions and th this this uh scientist that i mentioned he's uh gerard Schreller, i think that's the last name uh he has made some very interesting studies about the big bang theory Okay, and there's this NASA NASA radio radio frequency telescope or something. No, it's not a telescope, but it's a sound WMAP. Uh, this kind of goes and sees through time, uh, many 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 light years. Uh, this sound this uh, probe can see, or actually determine. And this is one diagram of what this WMAP. Uh, has found okay it kind of sees from our time all the way back in time to a place that they call actually the dark ages they don't know what the dark ages are 
they just know that from the dark ages, there's like the remainings of an explosion here in the universe. And that's about uh, 13.75, 77 billion years. So that's a lot of years. And they know that, or they have determined that after this, uh, before these dark ages, there was this afterglow light pattern that lasted for at least 375,000 years. And before that, there's this point of inflation that everything expanded from there. And they know, or they come to the conclusion that the Big Bang Theory uh, started with these quantum fluctuations from a just very small dense spot and that contained everything. And then from there, expanded to everything. So that, that those this is the kind of, of Big Bang Theory. It's crazy. But these kind of WMAP uh, investigations have them. It's all been it's all based on mathematics. So am I yes. correct in saying that? Yes. Oh, okay. mathematics, mathematics, and uh, these radio frequency telescopes and all these observations that they have done of the stars. And th there are, of course, uh, theories uh, against and theories in favor of these of these observations and physical and mathematical calculations. But this is a diagram that mostly explains or tries to explain this Big Bang Theory. Okay, Wolf, you have raised your hand, yes? Yes, and so I, it's fascinating to me, but I've seen some uh, documentaries here lately where now with the additional information they're getting that it's basically kind of disproving itself. There's something else going on. There's some other aspects that they can't account for. Yeah, that they're learning and says, well, that doesn't really fit in our paradigm. So something else happened and something else is going on. So, yes. you know, our, our little pea brains can't conceive the majesty of God. I just have to accept the fact that, you know, I'm happy to be here. You, you know what? The thing is that it's very interesting. The definitions that the scientists, even atheist scientists have come up with the for an explanation of what is happening here. The thing is that look at these definitions. These are scientists giving the definitions of the things that uh, are before the Big Bang that gave birth to the Big Bang theory, even if it's valid or not valid, or there's something different. The definition of here is very interesting because they say, listen to this. They say that before the Big Bang, there was this series of different forces that they have these um, these characteristics that number one, they, these forces are non-physical, non-physical. They act in the physical and they create or created the physical from nothing. So what they are really defining here, <laughs> It's very the, 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 the definition of this is very interesting because and I oh there's also thing and uh, these forces this set of forces that are non-physical and act on the physical and they create the physical from nothing they existed before the creation of the universe and when we understand Bereshit bara Elohim het hashamayim beet haaretz they are actually defining Elohim here. <laughs> Elohim, the word Elohim, is understood as this joint of forces that create everything. So they are basically defining Elohim here. It's very interesting, their scientist definition, because they are defining or trying to define what God is. I will share with you this. Uh, it's a small we'll just talk with this uh, doctor, Dr. Gerald Schroeder. He believes and shares the Torah uh, from a Jewish perspective, of, of course. Uh, but he, as, as a scientist too, he uh, has seen this and just grasped the, the, they say to the, to the scientist, he says to the scientist, you are defining God. <laughs> Don't look anywhere else. You are defining what Bereshit already has established. That Bereshit bara Elohim het hashamayim beet haaretz. He has organized everything from nothing. 
So this is very interesting. But verse number one uh, gives to us the understanding that we are creation and he is the creator or organizer of everything. And if we combine Bereshit 1, verse 1, with Hebrews 11, 3, Hebrews 11, 3 says, by emunah, by fidelity, remember, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So basically any creation theory, even a scientist atheist theory falls down into place and bows down to these two verses. Bereshit 1.1 1, 1 and Hebrews 11.3. So the Bible gives us the understanding of our origin. Where do we come from? We come from him. He has created us and he has given us life with a bigger purpose that we have found so far. Okay. Any questions or comments that you want to share? No? No, thank you. Okay. So we also have to discuss why does evil exist? If he is the creator and he loves the creation, why does this function exist? And this is one of the arguments that people use to not believe in God. If he, see, he is almighty, all-loving God, why are kids dying of hunger in Africa? Why is fathers killing their people? Why is their kids killing their fathers? Why is this all, everything is all messed up in the world? Why does evil exist? Well, we first have to understand that the word for evil is the word, the Hebraic word ra, which actually cannot be translated into bad or evil. The best translation for ra is dysfunction, something that does not function according to its uh, established purpose. I can use, for example, uh, this is a, a cup of, uh, of a coffee, but I can use this to just smash you in the head <laughs> but this, this this that's not this function <laughs> if i use it differently for what the purpose of what is it has been created i am dysfunctionally using this cup of coffee and i can i can find many different uh uses for this but its main purpose of existence is to hold up my coffee every morning <laughs> okay so when we do not function according to our purpose, then we are dysfunction. The thing is that the word evil is always associated with uh, bad things happening to the bad and good, to the evil and good, but it's mostly dysfunction. So, but what is the purpose of this dysfunction? If we don't have this dysfunction or, or we don't know what dysfunctionality is, we won't find the purpose in our lives. We won't find the way how we are supposed to be functioning. So this functionality is not the enemy of God. This functionality's purpose is to just show us what the function we are supposed to be doing. What is our function? Hasatan, which is has been translated into the devil, devil, devil. How do you pronounce that? Devil. 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 Uh, thank you. Uh, Hasatan is also a creation. He is not a equal force to the creator. Hasatan, it's a creation of God. So Hasatan actually is accountable to God. He has to ask for permission for anything that he does to the creator. We can see that in the book of Job. Hasatan renders account to God. He's not, uh, uh, he cannot move freely. He needs to ask for permission and he's accountable to God. Hasatan is not the opposite to God. Hasatan 
is our opposite. And he, actually we can look at it as our trainer. <laughs> He's training us to, so we can be more, uh, express more fidelity or emuna to the word of God. That's its main purpose of existence. I, I'm not denying his existence, but I'm actually uh, finding the purpose of his existence to see how to build up our fidelity to our Lord and his word. Okay, so he exists for a purpose. And this functionality is a force of resistance. And it's adverse to all those who are part of his chosen people. This functionality will always be present in order to show us how to function properly according to his word. Okay, so yeah, there's this is allowed by God to show us uh, his purpose, his, his divine purpose for us, okay? So degraded the adversity that we find in our, in our lives, degraded the gratitude that we should show up because adversity is training us to be more uh, faithful to our Lord, okay? So sometimes people just go into this quest of reprending the, the devil and just going against these evil forces in the world, but we are not supposed to go against them. We are supposed to understand them and to show more faithfulness to our, our creator. Okay? So that's why the evil exists and will always exist. It's, it's, the, its purpose is to show us the importance of living according to the Bible. Okay? Any comments that you may want to add? I, I just have a I have a comment, Moi. So so uh, relating back even to um, again just last week's with circumcision, uh, dysfunctionality is the force of resistance and, uh, and uh, um, adverse to those who are part of his chosen people. So again, but uh, dysfunction is a force. Of resistance. So that's that relates also to then. Um, and again, I'm answering my question as I say it out loud, but I just have to do that. Is that uh, so character? Our, our character, right? So we're working towards the, the fruit of the spirit, Galatians 5, like we talked last week. So even even character, right? And um, um, it, it, yeah, so, so, so the way we behave, the way we treat our kids, the way we treat our, our spouses, the way you had mentioned it last week too, of, of stubbornness and that too, that falls into this category. Yes, everything that is dysfunctional, we are not, uh, the thing is that we label, uh, we, la we our minds actually is our brain, and we have been thought that way also, to label things that, as evil or, or good, as bad or good. But the thing is that these uh, definitions are not biblical. The best way to understand good and bad is just by understanding the functionality or dysfunctionality of things. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the thing is that if we label those stubbornness, stubbornness, what, what is stubbornness, for example? The stubbornness is a dysfunctionality. It's not evil. It's not bad. It's just a dysfunctionality. We're not functioning properly. We are mm -hmm. being stubborn. Mm -hmm. Okay? The thing is that yeah. we, are, we are used to label them as good or bad. Okay, we should just go out from this uh, labeling and we should label them now as functional or dysfunctional. Okay. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back to part number one. So uh, we find all of this in the first 11 chapters of the Bible. Okay, because we see the snake there speaking to, uh, uh, to Eve and then uh, eating from the the tree of good and evil, but it's the, the tree of functionality and dysfunctionality. And that's why the Lord says, what have you done? Where are you? What have you done? Okay. Are you living according to what my instructions or not? That's basically the, the questions that uh, God tells to Adam and Eve. Okay. So part number one is the origin of all things. Genesis 1 through 5. 
speak about the creation and also the fall of mankind. Genesis or Bereshit chapter 6 will speak about the humanity corrupted. So this is just an outline. So when we read the, the book of Genesis, uh, we have just like already uh, some things established. Okay, so it's a, a, an easier reading. So we know what to look for. Genesis 9, uh, and actually humanity corrupted from 6 to 9. Uh, in Genesis chapter 9, we will find uh, the covenant with Noah and his descendants. And just before Noah, everything was dysfunctional remember and that's why god decides to just flood make the the flood to everything uh in order to uh make it more functional again genesis to baptize, what to baptize to baptize a big baptize <laughs> <laughs> a big a big cleanse and wash <laughs> <laughs> Genesis 10 and 11 it, uh, speaks about the origin of nations, you know, with uh, Nimrod and Babel and everything, uh, that everything, all the languages are created there. Uh, that's in chapter 10 and 11, the origin of nations. And after that, we jump to part number two of the book of Genesis, and that speaks about the origin of the covenant family. Because chapters 12 to 25, and they are not exactly from 12 to 25. Sometimes the story starts overlapping with the next story. But just, just to give some kind of order to the chapters, chapters 12 to 25 will speak about Abraham. After Abraham, we have discussed that in the basic course. After Abraham, what's the name of his son, remember? Isaac. Isaac. Isaac is from chapters 26 to 28, overlapping with the history of, of Abraham. And Isaac's son? Jacob. Jacob. Jacob will be uh, from chapters 27 to 35, overlapping also with the story of Isaac. And the other, the other son of Isaac, do you remember his name? Esau. So Esau, 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 or also Edom, remember Edom. Yeah, yeah. He is, uh, he has this chapter 36, which speaks about Esau and his descendants, his sons, Esau. And after that, the son of Jacob, the first, uh, how do you say, no, not the firstborn, but the, how do you say, the, the better of the promise uh, made to Abraham, the son of Jacob. Do you remember Joseph. his name? Joseph. 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 So yeah. we will find, and actually that's the end of, of Bereshit in chapter 50 with the death of Joseph. Okay. And Joseph's story goes from chapter 37 to 50. So, so you, didn't, you, you didn't mention Ishmael. Ishmael. Yeah. No, because the, the thing with Ishmael, it's not a whole chapter for Ishmael. It's just some verses for Ishmael. Okay. So, and actually we are looking to the covenant family. The okay. covenant family, okay. So to the okay. to the family that was made the promise. So because it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and even descendants. even though even though Ishmael was promised, though uh, you know, he, even though it's a short part, he still promised quite a bit by uh, in 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 land. I mean, not in, exactly. in in people and everything else like that, right? So okay, but that's fine. I understand the covenant family. Yeah. Okay. And that's the, the ending of Genesis, the end of Bereshit, okay? So what would be a key verse for the book of, of Genesis? Let me share it with you. We can find it here in Bereshit 12, verses 2 and 3. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth, all the families of the earth will, shall be blessed. Okay, we can find this one of the key verses of the book of Bereshit. <clears throat> okay. It, and that's repeated, it. Isn't it? And it's repeated like three times, right? Exactly. Exactly. We can find it here in Bereshit 12, 15. And 22. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. In different ways, but to the, the to the next three generations, to Isaac and then to uh, Joseph. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So some questions for meditating the rest of the week. Okay. Some questions that I will propose you. So I hope you find an answer because we have to make this also a personal thing. The Bible will always speak to his people as a group of people, but also will speak to the individual. Okay. So we, it will speak for each of us. So it speaks to the people, but also to each of us. So questions for the week will be very personal. And if you want to share them the next week, it's fine. If you just want to meditate on them, it's fine. I will not ask you for an answer to these questions. It's just a personal thing. Uh, but if you want to share, you're always welcome to share. To determine our origin, but our specific origin. Where do I come from? This is a very important question for us to ask ourselves. Where do I come from? Being more specific, how was my childhood family? What's my origin on, on this uh, space and time? Uh, how was my father? How was my mother? How was my family composed? How was the relationships in our families? Because that will determine or is determining so far our uh, emotional tendencies, also our character and personality. So we need to look back into our origins in order to see if they fulfill the divine purpose that uh, of what, how, because of how, no, not how, but uh, our created uh, divine purposes or they are dysfunctional. We need to look also to for dysfunctionalities here in our childhood family, because those gave origin to our current personality. So okay. we need to know the origins of that. Uh, also a very good important question is what child number am I? Am I the first born, the second born, the third born, the 12th born? This will also determine a lot on our personality nowadays. And we will speak throughout, uh, try to give some answers to these questions on the next 66 weeks. Okay, so we have plenty of time. <laughs> but you, we should start asking ourselves, okay? And also, what dysfunctionalities have I experienced myself? I'm gonna need a psychologist. <laughs> or the Bible. Well, I'm gonna choose the Bible this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay we will speak on on this uh on these matters uh for the next 66 sessions to see if we can look for an answer in the bible okay to these questions and how to change those things okay if they are not fulfilling our divine purpose or his divine purpose then how would, do we change them to become the divine purpose and the reason of why we were created in the first place Okay, so let's start the race on your marks, set, <laughs> and let's go, my friends. So this is the end of, uh, of this session, session number one, uh, and it's the very beginning of a uh, different understanding or to go deeper and to share in this uh, small study group that we are just the three of us. But I believe it will become a blessing for each of us and maybe for some people that also watch to this recording. Okay, Mr. Wolf, yes, you have your hand raised. Yes, are you opening up the floor to questions and comments? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so I'm not a fast reader. I can be. But as I read, I analyze and think about everything critically and then come up with questions that you know of course lead to further investigation i can just zip through something real fast but i get nothing out of it i mean if i i could i could go through a book just reading for speed and i wouldn't get anything out of it but um the way i normally read is just i'm kind of thinking about everything as i'm reading and trying to put it in context and everything for understanding uh, consequently uh, when I read through uh, Exodus in preparation for the, or uh, not Exodus, Genesis, uh, the first part of Genesis for this class, 
something jumps out at me um, as I was reading, and I, I, it's the first time I put color in my Bible because I wanted to bring it up as a question okay. or, or as a comment, is that the Bible is not written with our Western mindset, and you've brought that up before. It's not linear while we are linear thinkers, more like the Greek instead of the Hebraic cyclic thinking. So I'm looking at the, so God creates the uh, vegetation in, at the end of day three or in day three, he creates mm -hmm. the, the vegetation. And so, yeah, the earth sprouted with abundantly produced vegetation and plants yielding seeds according to, and then at, after, uh, um, he creates man and, uh, and the, the beasts on day six, and, uh, and then he talks about being fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. And then says, basically, I've given you every plant yielding seed and tree for fruit, and that shall be food for you. And then on in the next uh, in the next chapter. So he, he's on the seventh day. He's resting and ble blessing everything. But then he goes on and says in uh, on two five that no shrub or plant of the field was yet in the earth. No herb of the field had yet sprouted. So when he created the, all the plants, initially, I imagine that everything just popped into being, you know, at his command. But really what it was is he gave them permission because, again, the, at, after day seven, so we got all these animals and birds and fish out there that want to eat something. But as of right now, no plant or uh, shrub has yet produced anything because he had a create the rain to feed everything to, in the creation. So of course, in my linear mind, I'm thinking, well, how can that be? Everybody's hungry. Everybody's already here. We want to eat something, <laughs> but you know, God gave the plants permission to be, to exist, but we have yet to actually make it so that I could eat something. So, I mean, just my, my, that's my brain is like an, analytically going through this and trying to get the timeline. Right. So <laughs> And, yeah, and, you know, and, and and I think that's the problem. You're trying to you're trying to get into God's time link. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is a. Uh, I actually I will recommend the 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 scientist website. He gives a lot of answers on this time of tip this type of matters. He speaks about dinosaurs too. He speaks about the the creation oh. timeline. So I would recommend to go to his website. And I haven't read in a long time the the website of answers in genesis but i'm pretty sure that we might find something there uh but sometimes the thing is that it became a they they started going into a different direction of the the answers in genesis website from five years ago i started noticing some kind of different direction so i i wasn't uh, uh reading it anymore uh i used to i used to but I, I'm pretty sure that we can find uh, some explanation to this, okay? Uh, we will not discuss this kind of, of matters because it will just take, take a lot of, oh, lot, lot of time. But yeah, these kind of questions are the one that we are just to underline them so we can start investigating on them. Because and, if and this, this pop it up as a question for you, then there's a, a divine message for you in these questions that you are uh, are rising of this of these verses. Okay, what am I supposed to do with this? Okay, and it's not just to know what is happening or to just set up a timeline, but there's a, a message from our Lord for you in in the answer to these questions, and we should start looking for it. Okay, and that was my that was my point when I read. The questions pop up, which leads to further study because I have to answer those questions, or just <laughs> one of the two. Yes. By the way, I, I posted that I posted that thing to the Yeshua's disciple so that you can take a look at it. Yes. Okay. Also, the, the thing is also with highlighting with different colors. Uh, the thing is that sometimes we we don't find the answer right away, but we know that it's there the question. So we just continue to reading. The thing is that sometimes I have seen it with uh, with some other students of the Bible that they just stop there and until they don't ha have an answer uh, uh, to this question, they don't keep reading. And the purpose of this 66 session, and actually 66 weeks is more than a year, uh, a year and 14 weeks. 
So it will give us plenty of time to start answering these questions, but to also continue with the reading. Because sometimes the answer might be found in a different verse. So that's why we should continue to read. Okay, so it's a good it's a good idea to stop and make some maybe basic understanding on, on the verse, but continue reading because we might find the answer later. Okay. Yeah, and if I can suggest to you too, Wolf, like the uh, it took me a little while, but but uh, going in and finding an audio app, you can find it in the in the version. You can find them in any version, right? And and again you get in the flow and and I can still highlight as it's reading. And, and like Moe says, I'll, I'll read a chapter. And if I need to go back, then I stop at the end of the chapter and I do go back or it's highlighted now, especially with the, the code of all the colors, it, it will certainly uh, uh, set apart different things that we're talking about now too. But, uh, but, but it does push you along in the, the Bible faster than I'm, a, I'm a, again, reading was not my strong point, right? But it does, this reading app is, the, the, the audio app has really uh, changed the way I read the Bible. It's, it's helped me so much, right? It's changed a lot of things for me, especially so. Okay, my friends. So let's start uh, having more questions than answers and let's start looking for those <laughs> answers, okay? <laughs> Did you hear that, Wolf? <laughs> Oh, I, I don't have I don't have a problem with that. I, I I know the question. I try to look at it a little bit and analyze it, but I have no problem because I realize that I'm not God, and uh, and I don't want the job. So yeah, we we won't find a lot of answers to the questions that we have, but at least we have the answer. The thing is that at least we have the question. At least we have the question. Uh, sometimes we don't we don't we are not willing to be uh, questioned by everything. And we should start having questions. If we have the questions, then our Lord will provide with the answers at some point in our lives. Maybe not right away, but he will provide the answers, maybe until his return. Some of the, the questions we know that he's not going to answer until his return. Well, Catalina makes that point all the time. Actually, it's come up in our conversations. I, I've made it as well. Say, hey, listen, when Yeshua comes, we'll get to know all the answers to all these questions we have. It will all make sense. But the thing is that we should look forward to have the questions already. Yes. At least have the questions. Not take it for granted. I have these questions. Okay? It's it's a good idea to have these questions already. Okay? So maybe we don't have the answer, but at least we have the question. Yeah. Okay? And, I, and, and I, that will change our brains. And I didn't mean not to have questions, Wolf. I, I again. Oh I, no, I, 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 <laughs> I have no problem because I, again, I, I, I know very little. <laughs> yeah, well, and and like I said before in other classes, I appreciate uh, me just again since there's only three of us. I appreciate the questions you ask too because it's again different questions that I would never think of. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's what makes the group good is that we have uh, exactly. three different perspectives, right? So uh, yeah, very much appreciated uh, for sure. So yes. Okay. Well, my friends, so that would be the end of class number one or week number one of our, <clears throat> our uh, for these 66 sessions. And I don't know, Wolf, can you help us pray, please? Yes. Uh, Father, thank you very much for the class and for this investigation and uh, basically bringing questions up that are going to point us to uh, some kind of illumination down the road. Uh, I marvel every day in your creation, the fact that I'm actually even just alive mm -hmm. and then give me the opportunity to pursue you through your word, to learn more about you, uh, to learn as uh, Steve and Moises and I work together through the book. Um, thank you for all your provision, for providing everything that we need so that we can move through life and ask that you give us wisdom, discernment, and understanding as we go through your word. Uh, let us know what we need to accept in faith, and uh, let us know what we need to investigate to learn mm -hmm. more about you and your character and your plan for us in life. So guide us according to your will. Let us hear your voice. Let us be obedient in everything. And uh, thank you for the another opportunity to draw breath. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, my friends, so see you not next week because I'm going to be out of town, but see you, if God willing, uh, the 3rd of September, okay?
Take good Perfecto. care, my friends, and Shavuot for you. Shavuot. Bye bye.